Question 5.1 asks us to state the work energy theorem in words. And so it's the net work done on an object is equal to the object's change in kinetic energy. And then for 5.2 it says draw a labeled free body diagram showing all the forces acting on the soldier while being lifted upwards. So some students often say, Kevin, is there friction, air friction, air resistance? They say here that air friction is, um, oh, not to be ignored. That's very interesting. I was, I was about to say that it can be ignored, but it's not to be ignored. That's pretty interesting. So what we have here is we have, obviously the guy is going to have his own gravity, right? That's going to try to push him down or keep him downwards. Then there's the force in the rope itself that's keeping him up. Now, they tell us that the rescue helicopter is not moving, but they're lifting this guy up vertically. So if they are lifting him up vertically, so maybe he was like on some floor over here and then they put the rope down towards him and then they're pulling him upwards now. So because they're pulling him upwards, air friction would try to push him downwards. Remember, friction always tries to friction always tries to go against you. So there is a little bit of friction. That's actually really interesting. Okay, the next one says, write down the name of a non-contact force that acts on the soldier. So friction is not a non-contact force. Those air particles are actually touching him. Um, it's gravity. Gravity is a non-contact force. So we'll say there, gravity. Then it says, use the work energy theorem, which is W net equals to change in EK, to calculate the work done on the soldier due to the friction after moving a height of 20 meters. So we can use W net equals to change in EK, and then the forces that are responsible for the motion in that direction would be all three of these. So we would say here that it's W due to the tension, plus W due to friction, plus W due to gravity is equal to delta EK. And so now what we must remember is that the formula for work is F delta X cos theta. And so I'm gonna use that formula now for all three of those forces. So this one would be F tension, delta X, cos theta. Now, I'm not going to expand this one because they said determine the work done by friction. So we don't want the force done by friction. We want the work done by friction. So we're just going to say that. And then the gravity would obviously be FG, delta X, cos theta. And that's equal to change in EK, which is a half MV final squared minus a half MV initial squared. Now we just fill everything in. So the tension force is 960, the distance is 20. Now this man is moving upwards and tension is also going upwards. So that'll be cos zero plus the work due to friction plus gravity, which is 80 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by the distance. Now he's moving upwards, but gravity acts downwards. So that's going to be cos 180. Now what's interesting is that he's moving at a constant speed, so his final velocity and his initial velocity are going to cancel each other out, because you're going to have 80 and then you're going to have a final velocity of 4, and then the initial velocity is also 4, so that whole part actually cancels out. And so what we now end up with is 19,200 plus WF minus 15,000 680 equals to zero because those would cancel out. And if you had to go work out WF now, you would get 15,680 minus 19,200, and that's going to give us negative 3,520 joules. Now that is the answer. You don't go say negative, you don't go say acting down or acting up because energy doesn't have a direction, it's a scalar. And it makes sense that the energy is negative because the friction is always going to try take energy away from the object.